Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen, Air New Zealand goes green with first electric flight. Trump debuts expensive drone program amid World Cup security prep. And Textron restructures and chops e aviation unit. And I'm your host, Talon Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight, from electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. Air New Zealand goes green with first electric flight. Air New Zealand has taken its first big step toward electric aviation, flying the U.S.-built Beta Alia CX-300 out of Tauranga Airport as part of what the airline calls a technical demonstrator program. The aircraft on a four-month lease from Beta Technologies will tour several New Zealand cities as the carrier evaluates its performance and gets its crews situated with the new systems. Baden Smith, general manager of Air New Zealand, said, quote, It's incredibly special to partner with a global innovator like Beta to ensure New Zealand is a part of shaping what the future of flight might look like both here and around the world, end quote. The aircraft will operate from Hamilton next, with additional testing scheduled between Wellington and Blenheim in December. Each airport has been fitted with a 65-kilowatt mobile charging station, funded through Air New Zealand's Climate and Nature Fund. The Alia CX-300 is a battery electric aircraft with a conventional takeoff and landing design. It can carry two crew members and about 198 cubic feet of cargo over nearly 216 nautical miles, all while producing zero in-flight emissions. The design prioritizes compatibility with existing airport infrastructure, meaning it can slide into daily operations with less disruption than one would expect for a sci-fi concept turned real-life aircraft. After the break, Skyfly's Axe prototype gets the green light for piloted tests. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 Remote Pilot Certificate or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our next Gen Minute. Skyfly's Axe prototype gets the green light for piloted tests. The first prototype of the Skyfly Axe has gotten the federal nod of approval to begin piloted flights, allowing it to stay on U.S. soil as it progresses through its lengthy test campaign. The two-seat, vertically capable device was dreamed up six years ago and was debuted at this year's Oshkosh. The Axe prototype, serial number one, and registered as November 250 Echo Victor, will now continue its test program through winter before transitioning to customer demos early next year. Skyfly's timing coincides with the FAA's new Mosaic rules, which expand LSA eligibility to include small eVTOLs. Netherlands joins USAF CCA program. Hees Tuenman, Dutch State Secretary for Defense, signed a letter of intent to signify the Netherlands joining the U.S. Air Force's Collaborative Combat Aircraft Program and highlighting a new step in transatlantic cooperation in autonomous unmanned systems that will fly as loyal wingmen along manned fighters. The signing took place ahead of the Defense Industry Days at the Dutch Embassy in Washington, D.C., and the agreement is in alignment with the Netherlands Defense Strategy for Industry and Innovation that was launched in April and identifies unmanned systems as a national priority. AV expands switchblade loitering munition variants. AeroVironment, a global provider of loitering munition systems, announced three new variants of its Switchblade family of precision loitering munitions, the Switchblade 600 Block 2, the Switchblade 400, and the Switchblade 300 Block 20, equipped with a modular, explosively formed penetrator payload. The new systems brought in the Switchblade line across echelons and mission objectives, from individual backpackable close-in lethal precision effects to multi-domain, long-endurance anti-armor solutions. These ensure warfighters are able to maintain tactical advantage in congested environments. PICA receives AFWorks Award for Dropship Cargo Drone. 
PICA announced it has been awarded a direct to phase two SBIR contract to focus on the development of Dropship, a next gen long range multi mission cargo UAS platform intended for the needs of the Department of the Air Force. The Air Force Research Laboratory and AFWorks have accelerated the timelines from proposal to award to streamline the small business innovation research and small business technology transfer process. This expands the pool of potential small business applicants and eliminates bureaucratic overhead. That's it for our Next Gen Minute. Let's get back to you the rest of the news. Trump debuts expensive drone program amid World Cup security prep. With the 2026 FIFA World Cup fast approaching, the White House is turning its attention to the airspace above with plans for a $500 million drone program. This is aimed at helping state and local governments counter potential drone threats and keep pace with ever-advancing aviation technology. The effort centers on safeguarding airspace over the 104 soccer matches scheduled across the United States next summer. The funds, drawn from the Department of Homeland Security's budget under Trump's recently enacted One Big Beautiful Bill, will equip police departments with handheld detection and jamming tools designed to spot and disable unauthorized drones. Officials say the move is an attempt to get ahead of one of the most unpredictable threats to large-scale public gatherings. Andrew Giuliani, who heads the White House's FIFA World Cup 2026 task force, said the funding has been a long time coming. Quote, everybody from the governors to the police commissioners to the stadium chief security officers say this is something they need, end quote. Extending the authority to intercept or disable drones, even temporarily, is a far cry from existing regulations that put federal agencies in charge. Many now argue that, without broader authority, response times at major venues could lag and turn a small threat into a disaster before anyone has a chance to react. After these messages, Textron restructures and chops e-aviation unit. For over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Welcome back. Textron restructures and chops e-aviation unit. Textron has confirmed that it will be retiring its e-aviation business unit, but only its name. Programs within the sector, including Pipistrel, the Nexus eVTOL, and various military technologies, seemingly remain alive and well under the company's other five divisions. The restructuring takes effect January 4, 2026. Much of e-aviation's portfolio, including Pipistrel's light electric aircraft, will be absorbed by Textron Aviation. The company says this move will allow those programs to, quote, leverage the development, manufacturing, and sales expertise, end quote, of its established general and business aviation arm. Textron's Nexus eVTOL will also transition to Textron Aviation, ensuring continued support for the high-profile program as it works through its flight test campaign. Meanwhile, e-aviation's manned and unmanned military-related projects will shift to Textron Systems, which handles defense and government operations. Textron says this realignment will provide, quote, more direct access to the targeted customer base, end quote, for advanced defense technologies. Additional research and development work in flight control and air vehicle management systems will move under the corporate umbrella to support multiple business segments. Textron launched its e-aviation division in 2022 following its acquisition of Slovenia-based Pipistrel, one of the industry's earliest producers of certified electric aircraft. Its poster child, the Velis Electro, is known as one of the first type certified electric-powered aircraft, being approved for pilot training in day VFR in more than 30 countries. 
And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.